That'd be a good idea, wouldn't you, Secretary? Good afternoon, distinguished ladies. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my job here this morning, this afternoon, is uh, pretty simple, is to welcome all of you to this very, very important event. Um, this event is designed to uh, amplify and elucidate and explain basically what is happening in Nigeria. Um, Nigeria has basically started losing all its um, institutions of governance. The executive branch is clearly gone. The legislative branch is a rubber stamp um, section of branch of uh, Nigerian government, and now the judiciary is not about to go. I think it's already gone. And we believe that if the judiciary goes, there goes Nigeria. Because it's the last institution standing, albeit standing on one leg alone. Now the second leg has just been knocked out. The, the judiciary crisis in Nigeria um, started to manifest itself very clearly when the, um, the Chief Justice of the Nigerian, the Supreme Court of Nigeria was um, abruptly removed without following due process, removed by the President of Nigeria, Mr. Buhari. Um, as you recall, he was subsequently replaced by uh, one Mr. Tanku Muhammad. And the Nigerians were, Nigerians were actually not sure what was going to happen. But at some point, it became obvious that it was a prelude to the Atiku versus Buhari case. They were preparing grounds to uh, disenfranchise the people of Nigeria by first removing the uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria and second replacing him with uh, Mohammed Tanko or Tanko Mohammed. Um, before the before the um, Supreme Court of Nigeria heard the Atiku versus um, Buhari, Mr. Tanko Mohammed quickly went and destroyed the age-long practice of selecting judges to hear cases based on their seniority. They figured that if they had allow the seniority practice to continue, that it would have been difficult for the Supreme Court to be manipulated. So they went ahead and scrambled the system, they just chose number one, number 10, number 20, and just made up the seven justices that heard um, a Tiku case. And you all know the result of that case. Now, Nigerians have been very uncomfortable with how the uh, Buhari administration has been using the judiciary. But it became very, very obvious where Nigeria uh, was heading to when the Imo governor was removed from office by this same Supreme Court. And, uh, after he had served for about seven months. Um, the Nigerians are very concerned, or they were very concerned because they looked at the, the, 
the mathematical reasoning behind the uh, governor's removal, and it just didn't make sense. And in, in previous Supreme Court cases, uh, the legal jargons um, made it very difficult for the common man on the street to understand um, what was going on. But in this case, two plus two became five, and people started wondering, wait a minute, two plus two has always been four, what happened here? You know, and that's why there's a lot of uh, outcry. So what we have today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, a continuation of the protest by the people of Imo State, by the people of the southeastern part of Nigeria, and by the people of Nigeria. But this time today, it's by the American people, Nigerians who live in America, and other Americans. That's basically the essence of what you're having here this afternoon. Um, we want to bring what is happening in Nigeria to the attention of the international community. And this is what uh, this event is all about. Um, the Nigerians in diaspora and the U.S. Council on Nigeria um, are the ones responsible for you know, this event. So um, you'll be hearing from some speakers. Um, we have a keynote speaker here, uh, Mr. Bruce Fine, who most of you um, are familiar, you're familiar, you must be familiar with him. Uh, he is going to be today's keynote, and he's a very, he's the foremost uh, uh, constitutional law expert in the world, in the United States, and vicariously in the world. So he's going to help look into the, um, the issues that um, are coming up from this Imo State uh, judgment. Uh, on my left is another uh, gentleman. Oh, by the way, um, Mr. Bruce Fine was the, uh, the former Deputy Attorney General of the United States under Reagan. So, um, so um, did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and so he, he understands uh, what's happening. Uh, he's done a lot of work in Nigeria in, and in other African countries. Constitutional work that is not, um, not business work, constitutional work. He's been involved in the constitutions of many African uh, countries. So you'll be surprised, uh, therefore don't be surprised to, to hear him break the Nigerian situation into uh, pieces that uh, you, you, you'll be surprised uh, that even a Nigerian lawyer may not be able to uh, present to you. <laughs> so uh, on my left here we have um, uh, Mr. W. Bruce Delvai. He's um, another constitutional law expert, a litigator, uh, but he brings to us the Florida perspective of um, his expertise. He's, he's the Washington attorney, but originally out of uh, the state of Florida. So that gives us a very fantastic mix today. Um, we have further down Mr. Uh, Dr. Professor, Professor Edward Oparoji, uh, a very good friend of mine, and uh, I've known him for a very, very long time, uh, a big activist in, 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 in the then Nadeko days. And uh, I was surprised to see him here. I thought he would have been in Nigeria to, to reap the benefits of, of, of his fight. He was one of the pe persons that ushered in the democracy that uh, is about to be destroyed uh, by this uh, Buhari administration. And uh, on my extreme right is uh, Dr. Uh, Stanley Onye, another household name in the Washington, D.C. Uh, area. He was very active in uh, 1AD number, the premier Igbo uh, organization in, in the United States. And uh, it's a very big pleasure for me to reconnect with uh, the two of them, because uh, uh, with Dr. Uh, Professor Paroji, I did an adequate work with him. 
with uh, Dr. Stanley Onye. I did uh, one eight number work with him. So all in uh, activism. Um, so anyway, uh, I will now hand over. Uh, Zubi is going to be the moderator of uh, uh, today's event. Um, I'm, my job, like I said, was basically to say hello to all of you and to welcome you to, to today's event. Uh, to show you that this is an American project, um, Mr. Devai is going to be the one to introduce the uh, Imo uh, Supreme Court judgment and, and, and break it down so we can understand the basis for uh, you know, why everybody is very uh, unhappy. Uh -huh. And then uh, the keynote speaker um, would pick it up from there. Because you know, we need to understand the, the background before uh, the keynote speaker gets into it. So today we're going to get into the, the, the details of the case. And then um, now attempt to proffer uh, a solution. And then we'll have the uh, audience you know, participate in, in, in their comments. Um, we're very mindful. Um, not to make this event one that is trying to infringe on Nigeria's sovereignty. Uh, it is not. We're not telling Nigeria what to do, but we are Americans. We are Nigerian Americans, and whatever happens in Nigeria concerns us. It also concerns uh, America, because um, anything that goes wrong in Nigeria affects the, the, the West African sub-region in, in a manner that many people cannot imagine. So um, if you have a problem and you keep the problem to yourself, um, people will not help you. But Nigeria today, we have a problem. And we're asking America as American citizens, um, we're asking America as an ally of Nigeria, we're asking America as a, a country from um, whose political system uh, Nigeria is operating to please come and do all within your reach to um, convince the judiciary to um, rehear this case and do, um, and do the right thing. And, and so, um, I wanted to make you know that very clear. It's very obvious that is the political, the, the ruling or the governing political party in Nigeria, which is APC, that is orchestrating all of this. Now, the APC leadership has now found the easiest way to win elections. We just do nothing. We lose. We go to the Supreme Court. And two plus two will become five, and then you win. So it's going to destroy the the the, the new Nigerian democracy, and um, you know it's like you learn at the, the university that I went to. I would not like for it to to um, they want to see me succeed because I am a product of that university. So America should continue to see um, ways um, to ensure that the Nigerian democracy survives, because this is where we all you know, started. So um, it's for them to let the, 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 the ruling political party, APC, and its leadership understand that they cannot use the judiciary and the Supreme Court in particular to advance their political uh, interests, political gains, and stuff like that. That's pretty much the meat of what we're doing. Let the APC leadership know that they cannot continue to use the Supreme Court. That's not how, why the Supreme Court was put in place. So I will hand over first to um, Mr. Devaye, and then uh, I won't come back here again, and um, Mr. Zubi, if, there's, if anything needs to happen, it will be coordinated and moderated by Mr. Subi. Thank you very, very much.